Judges chapter 11. Now Jathan the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of a harlot, and Gilead begat Jathan. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jathan, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit our father's house, for thou art a son of a strange woman. Now here the strange woman is a harlot, paid. That's what happened with Judah. Oh, actually, he thought he was a harlot, but actually it was his daughter-in-law. Uh, so, in uh, this case right here is, you know, there are sons of the natural wife. There's a son of a, of a, of a harlot. They thrust the son out, the brother. And Japheth fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men unto Japheth and went out with him. Now, vain was the, no value. No sense. We've already seen another man in the Bible. He gathered uh, we'll be here chapter 9 verse 9-4 concerning Abimelech wherein Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. He hired here this came on to him. It's your Robin Hood kind of story. He gets a group of friends. He gets a group of, of a military outposts. David's the same way. Uh, vain men. In verse 4, And it came to pass in the process of time, time passes, that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Japheth out of the land of Tob. Now get out of here. Oh, now we need you. Come here. And they said unto Jason, Come, and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Amen. Now back in chapter 10, verse 18, where we close the last chapter, and the people and the, and the princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Amen? And he shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So 18 of chapter 10 fits in here and the question lies by the men of Gilead okay who's going to be this man who's going to protect us in chapter 11 verses 6 and 7 and 8 we find that man and Jason said unto the elders of Gilead did not ye hate me expel me out of my father's house true why are you come to me now when you are in distress? See, like the best friends you guys when they're in distress. They need something. They need your help. They need you. That's not the best friends. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jacob, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Now the question was, why are you come unto me and when you're in distress in verse 8 they never answer we just need someone to help us against the children of Amen. they never tell Japheth they're sorry they never tell Japheth the reason we just need Japheth and out of all the people they can think of there's only one man they, can, they have an idea that will help them it's kind of interesting all of Israel there's one man And again, verse 8, the elders of Gilead said to Jason, Therefore we turn again to thee now. All right, we're coming to thee. We brought you back. That thou mayest go with us. Come, unity with us, even though we didn't want anything to do with you. Verse 2. And fight against the children of Amen. So Jason has got to be some kind of warrior, kind of man of strength for all the men in Israel that they got to call this one. They said, get out of here. And be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And that goes to chapter 10, verse 18. And Japheth said unto the elders of Gilead, If, conditional, not sure yet, if ye bring me home again. So if I'm going to do what you want to want me to do, I want to come back home to Gilead. 
if you agree with me, to fight against the children of Amen, and the Lord Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, deliver them before me, shall I be your head? All right, so here's the conditional causes. If I go out and fight, I'm coming back home. My home is where you guys are. My land, where my father raised me. Where my, I don't know if the mother was there, but where I was raised by my father and my brethren. I'm coming back home. And if God gives me the victory and they fall before me, third condition, I'm going to be your head, I'm going to be your ruler. Now, it's not a king. It's a military strength kind of rulership. It's a military rank. And Jacob is in the back of his mind, do I really trust these people? And you can't blame them. And the elders of Gilead said unto Japheth, the Lord be witness. Okay, there we go. There's an oath placed by God, before God, about God. The Lord be witness between us if we do not so according to thy words. Verse 9. Come home again. And if the Lord gives you victory, we'll make you head. We swear by God. And Japheth went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. So even before the battle, even before the, the conflict comes, he's head. He's in charge of the military. And Japheth uttered his words before the Lord at Mizpah. So Japheth is going in the Lord, full strength of the Lord. Now, Mizpah is an interesting place because this place is the same place that David brought his mother and father to that, that the king of Moab may take care of him while he's on the run. It's interesting how these cities and what happens in them. And Japheth sent messages unto the king of the, of the children of Ammon, saying, all right, so he's not going to start war right away. As Jesus said, we're going to send ambassadors. We're going to find out what's going on here. So what hast thou to do with me that thou art come against me to fight in my land? Now they come against Israel, but now Jacob says, okay, I'm part of them. Now what is your problem that you're showing up here? And the king of the children of Ammon answered unto the messengers of Japheth, because Israel took away my land. When they came up out of Egypt from Arna, even to Jabbok, and unto Jordan, the river, now therefore bestow these lands again peacefully. Current events is this land has been taken by Israel. We want it back. And Japheth sent messengers again unto the children of Ammon. And said unto him, Thus saith, thus saith Jathan, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. Now Deuteronomy 2 9, this was in the law. And we're going to see that Jathan knows the law and knows history. Deuteronomy 2 9. And when it is in the law, it is prescribed by every Jew to obey. And Deuteronomy 2 9, the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given to Ard the children of Lot for a possession. Now, when he's talking about the Moabites here, it's also Amen. God told the Jews by Moses, written down in the law. Don't touch that land. So the answer Jason gives back to the king of Amon. God has forbidden us for you to carry out and say what we did to you that we didn't do. Now the land was given from the Amorites not to the Ammonites. The Amorites had the land, not the Ammonites. The problem is not with Israel. And here's a king coming up with con, and they've now got a man that knows Jewish law and he knows Jewish history. So he goes further. Thus saith Jacob, Israel took not away the land of Moab, Deuteronomy two nine, nor the land of the children of Ammon, 
But when Israel came up from Egypt, history, and walked through the wilderness of the Red Sea, history, and came to Kadesh, history, he knows his history. Then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Eden, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. Now what Japheth is doing, he's given the historical document, it is dated and put in print in the book of Moses, the law. And here it is. And if you've got a promise with, promise with what Japheth is going to say, this is what God told Moses to write, and this is the accurate history. So I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Eden would not hearken thereto. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab. But he would not consent in Israel, bold and Canaan. Can we go through the highland, highway? Excuse me. And if we drink, we'll pay for the water. If we eat, we'll pay for the food. But let us pass on. And every time they sent out a, a group of people to withheld Israel from going through. And then they went through the wilderness and encompassed, encircled the land of Edom and the land of Moab and came by the east side of the land of Moab and pitched on the other side of Arnon. But came not within the border of Moab, for Arnon was a border of Moab. We didn't even go in the land. Now verse 13 says from Arnon. Japheth is correcting him saying, no, no, we did not. We couldn't go gone in Arnon. Moab did not let us go into Moab after we sought permission. But came not within the border of Moab, for Arnon was the border of Moab. We weren't even there. And Israel sent messengers on Sion, the king of the Amorites. Now don't get them confused with the Ammonites. There's Ammonites and Am Amorites. Amorites. And the king of Heshman. And Israel said, "Let us pass. We pray thee, through thy land unto my place." Now look, look at the, look at God having Moses seek permission to go, that they don't get. And look at the answer here. But Shion trusted not Israel to pass through his coast. Not that he would not allow them. He did not trust Israel. That's interesting. He did not want to trust him. And when we read verse 17, it says they would not consent Israel to go through. Here we see that Sihon had no trust. He did not. He had his eye on them. To pass through the coast, but Sihon gathered all his people together and pitched at Jahaz and fought against Israel. Moab and Edom said, no, you can't. Get out of here. Shihon, Amri said, we got an army and we fought. An army fighting is different from saying, no, you can't. So he fights Israel. This is what happened. And they smoked them. So Israel possessed all the land of Amorites and the inhabitants of the country, of that country. So speaking to the king, of the Ammonites. That land is our land. We sought permission from certain nations. They did not allow us. We sought information and a privilege to go through Amorite land. They came out and fought us. We kicked their butt and we got their land. That's history. You got a problem with it? It's in our law. God has prescribed it. It's written. Moab had nothing to do with us. Said nope. Edomites said, nope. Amorites, let's do battle. And when you do battle and Israel won, they get the land. That's how we got the land. Shut up and go home. We got it rightfully. Only America would have the fact is that Japan attacks America. We go over there and bomb and drop bombs on Japan that they have come to the end of the war by a peace treaty and hand over to Japan their own land. That we won. 
And not only that, we go over there with our money and fix up the cities that they attacked our city. And as far as I remember, Japan has never paid to have Pearl Harbor fixed. But we went over to the enemy territory and helped them out as we did with Germany. That don't happen in the Bible. We won the land, it's ours. And we're not going to give it back. That's what Japheth said. Japheth has given the king of Ammon the complete history on what happened and how we got it. It was his fault. He fought us. And we won. Plain and simple. Verse 22. And they possess all the coasts of Amorites. And Arnon, even the Japheth, from the wilderness even unto Jordan. Now this is the land that the king of Ammon wants back. We won it. God gave us a victory. So now the Lord God of Israel has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel, and shouldest thou go and possess it? God gave us a victory. You think we're just going to hand it over to you? You think we're Americans? God gave us that land. That's what he's telling them. And notice how he says Amorites, again, this land, the question you may have with chapter 11 is, it's Israel's land, but they got it from the Amorites, which fought Israel. Cursed be him that curses Israel. So he loses. Now this king of Ammonites comes in and says, well, we're just going to name it and claim it. They've been watching too much Joe Olstein. They've been watching too much TV evangelism to say, hey, it's our land. We're going to name it, claim it, and God's going to give it to us. And Japheth, the, the Bible historian, the law knower, says, no, sorry. It ain't going to happen. So, gives God the credit, by the way. And watch this, verse 23. Now the Lord God of Israel has disposed, dispo, dispossessed the Amorites. God did it. God did it. From before his people Israel. And shouldst thou possess it, you're going to name it and claim it? Why not thou possess that which Chemish, a fallen god, Chemish thy god giveth thee to possess? Oh, he says, let's have a battle with God. He does an Elijah here. Let's have a battle of the gods here. What did Chemish give you? And according to the Bible, Chemish, who has no eyes, can't see, has no mouth, can't speak, he has no nose to smell, he has no ears to hear. What is Chemish given to you? And later on, when Judah is going to be sacked by, by Babylon, Babylon will say, well, look at all these nations and their gods. Look how great it is. Where are the gods of these people? Where are the gods of these people? Where are the gods of these people? Losers. So Jesus is calling out and saying, hey, what about your great God? And what he's saying is, say, listen, I have told you the history. I have told you the, the biblical truth of our God. Jehovah. All right, you tell us about your God. So whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, them will we possess. And God has put in a law, Moab we couldn't touch, Ammonites we can't touch. Sorry. But the Amorites, they came and did this battle. God gave us a victory. It's ours. Plain and simple. Verse 25. By the way, that we will possess the entire land of promise. God said, that's yours. We'll go in there and possess it. The book of Joshua. <laughs> in case you want to come on this side and start naming, claiming our cities. And now art, now art thou anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Wow. This guy knows his history. Did he ever strive against Israel or did he ever fight against them you know ever come to battle like you are right now you got some nerve come over here and start fighting us they went and hired somebody to curse us and that didn't work while Israel dwelt in Heshbon in her towns in Aror and her towns and in all the cities that belong by the coast of Arnon 300 years Why therefore did you not recover them within that time? Come on, it's been 300 years. 
that then there's a lot of question what this 300 years are. All right, but the main basic fact, 300 years, you mean you couldn't claim that land? You couldn't name it, claim it by Chemish? You could not name it, claim it by the television evangelist that you go in and name by? Why couldn't you do it during that time? Why do you got to wait to now? Why do you got to pick on me? Man, my family threw me out. I went over. <coughs> I got me a bunch of men. I'm having a good old time. I'm doing great and all that. Now you got to come over here and bust my butt? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll get the Lord God and Jehovah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we'll battle your Chemish. But you had 300 years to do what you're complaining about. <laughs> this guy's got character. Wherefore, I have not sinned against thee. Whoa. But thou doest me wrong to war against me. Ooh. The Lord, the judge, capital J, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. Whoa. Now he's challenged. Now we're putting gods against God and the, and the people of God versus the, the, the people of gods. I got a couple verses here. Acts 10.42. Let's check out the verses. Acts 10.42. Acts 10, 40, and this is exactly what Elijah did. I mean, should you go and rank on gods and, and television evangelists? Elijah and Japheth did. 1042. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which has ordained of God to be a judge, capital J, of the quick and dead. That's Peter's confession of God to a Gentile. Oh, this is Japheth, a half Jew, speaking to a Gentile. God is capital J, judge. Hebrews 12, 23. Hebrews 12, 23. So God's going to judge all. In Hebrews 12, 23, the General Assembly and the Church of the Firstborn, which are written in heaven, man's book of life, and to God the Judge, capital J, of all, saved or lost, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, there he is, God and Jesus, the judges. So, here comes a big capital J judge. And this ain't like your television courtrooms. This is not like any municipal court judge or any circuit court judge or any Supreme Court judge, but this is God Almighty as judge. And Japheth is called the God of his fathers, of the small gods of Ammon to battle. How be the king of the children of Haman hearken not unto the words of Japheth, which are which he sent him. They're not going to listen. Many people do not listen to the words of God. Get involved in any public ministry, and you'll see. People do not love the word of God. So let's see what happens with God. Then the Spirit of the Lord. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the same Spirit that indwells in me as a believer. Came upon Japheth, not in, but upon. That same upon is when, when the Spirit descended out of heaven like a dove and came upon Jesus. And notice all the places where we see the Holy Spirit of God, we don't see any doves. And he passed over Gilead and Manasseh and passed over Mispeth of Gilead. And from Mishpith of Gilead, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And he's coming to battle. He's on his way. And Japheth vowed a vow unto the Lord. Uh-oh. And said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hand, 
Okay, so far good. Then it shall be that what? What? He is not thinking what's going to happen at the end of this story. What? So ever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me. When I come home, whatever the doors, whatever, whatsoever, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord, Jehovah, and I will offer it. What? It. It. What? He has no idea what's going to happen. He's thinking a cow. He's thinking of a chicken. He's thinking of, of something other than his daughter. I will offer it up for a burnt offering. What were the burnt offerings? They were goats. They were calves. They were uh, oxen. They were sheep. They were lambs. He is expecting an animal to come walking up to him. And he says, that animal, I am going to give you God. As a burnt offering. Nowhere in the law that he knows ever says to give your child. Nowhere. He's got his mind an animal. And that's important because verse 37, when he makes his vow to God, he could have said what or it. He could have said, Lord, I had no idea in my heart that it was going to be my daughter. I was expecting an animal. He could have bypassed his daughter and said, if a sheep came walking by, that's what I meant the what in it. Yeah, and the Lord knows his heart. The Lord knows. And it's not what his daughter. But you got to give Jacob credit that he does to his vow, and yet he's wrong. But he does his vow. And nowhere do we see God ever honors his vow. But look at what time we are in the book of Judges. Every man did that was right in his own eyes. Was it right for him to give his daughter? Absolutely not right at all. God has never ever called anybody but Abraham to give their child to God. And they, God already knew that he was going to call a goat. At that moment here, Japheth, when he's, my daughter shows up, he should have gone instantly to Genesis 22 and said, that goat over there, Lord, I had no idea it was going to be a human sacrifice because I know you are displeased with human sacrifices because they are going on right now in Japheth's time. They are going on right now in Judah. People are giving their children to Molech. And you are not pleased. Because you've got the same story here. Look at Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Genesis 22, 1. Now, this is God speaking to Abraham. We don't see God speaking to Jacob. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac. This is his only child, his only daughter, Japheth's. There is no other child, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering. Burnt offering. Japheth. Upon one of the mountains which I tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. And his ass. And took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son. And clave the wood for the burnt offering. And rose up and went into the place where God had told him. Then the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes. And saw the place afar so off. And Abraham said unto the young man. Abide here with the ass. And I will. The disciples stayed with the ass. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. 
Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. You know, his daughter went in the mountains to lament her virginity. There are cross references of, of Genesis 22 with Judges 11. That Japheth should have gone into his mind. He knows the history. He should have gone back in his mind. Had he wrought God, God, show me something. Show me what I can do. God may have played back Genesis 22. Doesn't it sound the same? Yes, Lord. In verse 7, I suspect Abraham's father said, My father. He said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the land for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went to, with that, the both of them together. This is like his daughter. Father, do what God has told you to do. I just give just let me go bemoan my virginity. And you ever wonder, maybe she went off saying, you know, I think it's too much when we get there. Maybe she's like, God, will you show him something? Will you show him that there's another cause? God, you are not pleased with human sacrifice, maybe? I don't know. And they came to the place which God had told of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. And bound Isaac and son laid on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham struck forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, here am I. He said, lay not that. And then... He looks, and there's a ram. And Isaac gets to go home that afternoon. Oh, how Judges 11 and, and Genesis 22 show together. So he says, whatsoever, and it. So Japheth passed over unto the children of Amon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he smote them from Aurora. Even till thou come to Minna, even 20 cities. That number 20, I find, is a very interesting number in the Bible. Where that shows up. And unto the plain of vineyards, with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. God gets the victory. And Japheth came to Mizpah. Okay, this is where David... Sends his mother and father for protection. Unto his house. And behold his daughter came out to meet him. Verse 31. Ever come forth from the doors of my house to meet me. And the scriptures say his daughter came out to meet him. Numbers 30, verse 2. Numbers 30, verse 2. And this is what the law prescribed. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a, oath, with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to that proceeds out of his mouth. Well, if you go with the heart, but man looking on the heart, not the outward appearance, you would you would assume that in a in, in Japheth's heart, what it it's not a human being. Yeah, he's expecting a cow, a ram. But the scriptures say he came out to meet him with trembles and with dances. She was his only child, like Isaac. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. Man, cross that back to Genesis 22. If only he remembered that that morning and say, Lord God, remember my father Abraham? And the oath that he put before you, he's going to follow you from this day forward. Lord, you knew my heart. I had no idea ever to think about that my daughter was going to be the one going to come out of that door. And when you would see a house like this, the animals would be in the house too. You look at village pictures. Then there's probably not even a door. The animals are coming and going. The, the chickens are, you know, running all around the. That's what he's expecting. 
At worst, he could be expecting that horse come walking. Uh, well, I got to give a horse. I don't know if God, God ever wanted a horse, but it whatsoever. And she was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. So like the prodigal son story, the father is waiting and looking for the son to come home. The daughter is sitting and she's waiting for her father to come home. And with the prodigal son, there is a party. There is the son has come back. He's lost. He's found. How wonderful. How great. And the story in reversal of Je Judges 11. Oh, my father's home. He wasn't lost, but he come back from battle. He didn't get killed. And the child dies. Oh, what a book Judges weaves. And it came to pass when he saw her. Makes you wonder if there's other things he saw. But he said meat. That he rent his clothes. And said, alas, my daughter. Thou hast brought me very low. Thou art one of them that trouble me. Now what is the one of them? I don't know. The men he just fought, maybe, but there's one of them that's troubled me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. Matthew 12, 36. Matthew 12, 36. The sin of Jacob is he opened his mouth. He made a vow. In Matthew 12, 36, But I say unto you, that every idle word, and that was an idle word, that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment before the judge, capital J. Now I hate to go on with the rest of the story. But we're in the times that judges rule. And I cannot go back. She said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which has proceeded out of thy mouth. Do you see Isaac there? Father, where is the lamb? God will provide himself the lamb. He bounds him. And Abraham just, I mean, Isaac just gets bound and put on to be killed. Which proceed out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord has taken vengeance on thee from thy enemies, even the children of David, she knows exactly what's going on. This Jath taught his family well. His daughter knows exactly what's going on. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done of me. Let me alone two months. I don't know why two months. That I may go up and down upon the mountains. Genesis 22. And bewail. That means to grieve, sorrow, wail. My virginity. She's a clean woman. I and my fellows. That's the women with her. For two months, they're going to go and they're just going to cry. They're going to grieve. They're going to have sorrow. And he said, go. And he sent her away for two months. And she went with her companions. That's the first time that word shows up. Companions with someone who's going to die in two months. And they go with her. And bewailed. That's the first time that word shows up. Past tense. Her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months. That she returned unto her father. She came back. Knowing what her father is going to do for her. Now seriously. I mean if you knew your parents were going to kill you. In two months. Yeah I'll come back. I mean would you come back at the end of two months? This girl did. 
And I guarantee these two months and these companions, these, these fellows, I guarantee they prayed, they earnestly, they fasted to God the Father. I guarantee it. I guarantee that Japheth for two months fasted and cried unto the Lord. Guaranteed. And then she returned unto her father. I wonder how long the prodigal son was gone. I don't think it tells us, but. Who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed. He put her up for a burnt offering. And she knew no man. So what's the story of all the... Intech and Indian and all the movies, they got to slay a virgin. Where did that come from? It came from Judges chapter 11. Now don't you go say how mean God is. God did not say anything about this child being sacrificed. There is nothing in here recorded, though I said they may have fasted and prayed and there's not recorded. We're not told if God said yay or nay to Jephthah's vow. But he was a man of his vow. There are many Americans who made a vow and not to God, to anything but God, and they don't hold word to the words that they spoke it. Jephthah did. I believe biblically he's wrong. And if it's murder, what's the Old Testament law say about it? He died and gone to hell. God does not approve of human sacrifice. That's throughout the whole law. And it was a custom in Israel. It comes a custom now. That the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Japheth, the Gilead, four days in a year. Now, I don't know where the four days come from. There was two months, but what a sad story. What a sad condition of Israel. And this is because of chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse number 6. This is why the story of Jacob. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashereth, the gods of Syria, the gods of Zidonian, the gods of Moab, the gods of the children of Haman, the gods of Philistine, which don't care. Go ahead, sacrifice your children. Give me blood. Whatever you want to do, it's fine for whatever you believe. And that's the spiritual condition of the children of Israel in Judges. It's sad. It's a spiritual condition of America today. 